we got about 30 of us here now, so why don't we get <coughs> going? And uh, we'll, we'll start by uh, taking you literally halfway around the world uh, to Manado, Indonesia. If, you, if you're not sure where Manado is, Indonesia, believe it or not, is about as wide as the United States, about 3,000 miles or so. Manado is in the eastern side on the northern, sort of the northeastern a corner more or less below the Philippines and uh, bordering on the band of sea. And it's a really cool place to dive. I think the first time we took a group there was around 2000 and we've going, been going back ever since. I know Buck has taken groups there and uh, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't do this if uh, we didn't like what we were doing. And the cool thing is not only do we like the resort, but we really like the people. And that is Danny and Angelique, who are the, the two owners, and, and even Jojo, who's their group coordinator, who you can see half her face uh, there. But uh, there's, there's all of Jojo's face. But um, uh, it's, it's like for us, it's like family going back. So we have a good close relationship with uh, Danny and Angelique, as well as the staff. And uh, we are very happy to have them as our Zoom Seekers speakers tonight. So Daniel, you have the floor. Everybody, you can unmute for one second and give them the hand clap and then mute yourselves. There we go. Of course, I can hit mute all as well. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Some of you we, we know and uh, some we hope to see again. Um, the first thing we'll start doing um, is uh, toasting you all with our anti-COVID drink. It's Jamu. It's a new uh, offering we have at uh, Murex. It's got turmeric and all this healthy stuff. And uh, you can toast your wine or your beer or whatever. And we're going to toast uh, uh, our, our Jamu. Bottoms up. Cheers. Nice to see you guys. Um, OK, we'll, um, I'm going to screen share this now. And uh, this is where Danny and I get nervous because <laughs> it froze on us a little <laughs> while ago. Ah, look, that looks good. I'll interject again. If you've got a full uh, screen share there, if you see there's a little little white thing on, at least not mine, on the right hand side, you can grab it and drag it left or right to make that as big or small as you want. Have at it, Danny. All right. Let me just get, uh, yeah, this is where it froze. Let me just get back to the beginning. Uh, sorry, let's chat some more. Angelique, say something brilliant. Oh, I don't know if it's our internet no pressure. Or, or what. We're having a lot of issues right now. Maybe um, the computer's infected with a virus. Can computers get COVID? <laughs> that would be interesting, huh? No, that wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're frozen. Danny, try going we're out frozen. of the screen share and just start it again. Been trying. Ah. Of course. Can you hear me? Because our yeah. screen is frozen on this yeah. end. We can hear you. And we can see you with a puzzled look on your face. <laughs> and Angelique is smiling, going, I'm glad that's not me frozen there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like we did a. Uh, well, it's nice to see everybody, you know. We did our big chamber day yeah, thing I'm last frozen, week. You guys. Yeah. Danny, you may you may need to reboot your computer. I hate to say it. I've and never had this. Uh, it's a Mac and... Uh, well, there's yeah. your problem. Come on. Who uses a Mac anymore? Yeah, I'll tell you. It's about eight years old. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but... Yeah. We were due yeah. for an upgrade, but anyway... So I'm frozen on this end. My 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 uh, picture's frozen. Okay. Um, do a control. Well, for me, it'd be a control alt delete. But can you not do stop share? I've tried. All right, let me see. Uh, can, I can you make Angelique a co-host and maybe uh, she can run it from her machine? Yeah. Hold on. I am completely stuck. Let me see. Angelique, you are now about to become a co-host. Danny, I'm going to try to stop. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if All I right. can do this. Uh, hang on a sec. I think I can kick you out. All right. Danny, that should have kicked you out of stop. Uh, oh, nope, it didn't. 
Okay. Wait, yeah, because before it took me a while. Let me try to kick him out again. I just unplug it. What I'm going to share with all of you is my Logitech. Those are my Logitech camera settings. Is that exciting or what? <laughs> Actually, if you're, nope, I can't, I can't get, I can't get them out of the screen share. For what it's worth, I'll put in the commercial for Logitech. If any of you are looking for a really good uh, standalone camera, there we go. You're out of screen share now, Danny. Uh, the Logitech Brio. 200 bucks, but it's, excuse me, it's a 4K camera. It's what I use. You got a lot of controls on it. Uh, absolutely worth the money if you're doing a lot of Zoom stuff for what it's worth. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes. Let me, yeah. let me let the. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, Angelique, not... where, where'd Angelique go? Um, why here. don't you talk? Oh, there you are. It's so funny. I'm looking at all my little thumbnails since you, you jumped around. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about, I, I mean, I realize it probably be covered in, in the, the presentation, but why don't you talk a little bit about the history of Murex and your dad's role in helping establish, you know, the great diving areas and stuff around uh around Monado. Yeah, so okay, so Murex started in 1988. Uh my parents uh started that. My father he he was uh he was a medical doctor actually, but then the ocean was his passion. Um he like he loved to scuba dive and then him and his brother it was I think start in the 70s. They were one of the first people in around Manado, North Sulawesi, to scuba dive. Um, my uncle brought some equipment back from the States when he was, uh, he went to school in Chicago for his pediatrician. And then he came back with some things. And then those boys, they just went scuba dive without knowing all the rules and all. They just basically went down as deep as they like. And then it was with the J5 back then. And then when they had like hard to breathe and then they just opened up the extra air and then just went up, shoot up again. So then in, um, on the, at the end of uh, 70s, my dad had a chance to go to school in Louisiana for his master. And then so he took the YMCA course then. And then he was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm still alive. <laughs> he said when he took that course because not knowing what he's been doing all those years. Yeah, it's scuba instruction crap. It's overrated. You know, what do you, what do you need? To do? What's <laughs> yeah. the worst? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyhow, fast track to 88. So some friends, um, some expats, actually some foreigners from Europe and the States so has been working in Manado. And then they like to go out with him. They went out diving and hiking and stuff like that. And then they suggested him, why don't you make a business out of this? And uh, they're still not sure. But then, then they start sending off their for sending friends over. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, next year, in, um, around March, my, um, we have five friends coming over and they want to stay with you. And then at that time, Murex, where we have the resort now, it was our uh, weekend place. So then started, well, okay, started with two rooms like that. And um, so from the two rooms, and then it became more and more and more. Um, back then, there was, there was no planning with my parents. Um, it was just like my mom would overbook. And then, then they would just like realize, oh, yeah, back then it was still on fax, fax machine, right? Sending all the bookings and inquiries. And then sometimes they got letters. So they still had like 60, six months a year to plan ahead. And then she figured out, oh, my gosh, yeah, on certain months we're overbooked. So we better build more cottages. So that's how they started. And then like in the beginning, that's why also all the cottages, they all look different. And then um, you just like, oh, yeah, maybe over there it's nice. We can just put another one over there and just like put it there. And then the restaurant, that's how things started. And um, yeah, and it was his passion also with the 
um, with the preserving the national park. So he was also essential in helping the government to set up Bunaken, then became the national park. Um, so then in, as he grew older, and then, then in Murex, then um, we started with, the, with that one resort in Manado. And then uh, my dad um, had a liveaboard also back then actually from one boat, then we had three boats. Um, and then he opened up the resort on Banca. But then um, as time goes, all the maintenance for the boats gotten really headache. I think at that time, I think Ken and Buck also went on the liveaboard. I think we went to Sangir Island there, uh, did the open, uh, the underwater volcano stuff at, at that time with the three boats. So because it was some small boats right so we had like trips like every week every week we could guarantee a trip back then so but then now we don't have the all the boats anymore maintenance gotten up too much and then it's getting harder and harder to get good wood so then we stop all the liveaboard and then now we have the two resorts in Manado and in um Banca so in 2014, so um, Dani, my sister, and her husband, so we we took over Murex from my parents. Um, so then, yeah, so then there's been some work on the ground. And then through this COVID time, it was, and then it's our time now to do some renovations. Finally, we could do some renovations. There's no, not really money coming in, but now it's all money pouring out. But then at ah, least- Ah, money, it's like construction. Work. Ah, money's overrated. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> By the way, let, Angelique, let me interrupt a second, because Danny asked me to make JoJo a co-host. We can run off no, the machine. I, JoJo, that's not going to work. Try, okay. try me again, please, Ken. Uh, you and should still... All right, hold on. Can you guys keep Angelique's stuff? Uh... How do I get this? To come All right, Danny, your co-host. I was going to say, this is sort of like um, we did Chamber Day last week. We had three different live feeds, and I talked to one of the people. I said, you want to rehearse in the afternoon? And she goes, nah, it'll work fine. Of course it didn't, but, you know, what are you going to do? So, Angelique, you guys let's, have been let's, able to... Let's, let's go ahead. Stop. Here we go. All right. Oh, there you go. Everybody good? Everybody cross your fingers and we'll see. Cross your if, fingers. We'll see if, if this works. Maybe Danny, maybe we'll, we don't do the uh, Jammu beer again. We just go for it. So these are just some things that we've been doing during COVID. Uh, lots of work, lots of different work. There's also been opportunities during this time. Uh, let's start you off with something pretty, fingers crossed. This is our Passport to Paradise mini video. I think it's three minutes. Ken? Yeah. Sound Sounds okay. coming in and out. You may not have checked the little two check boxes. Yeah, it's an unshare screen. Before you hit share, make yeah, sure yeah, the no. two check boxes are checked. Then hit share and start the video again. operation. It's all snow diving. It's white. And he totally white screen. It's white screen. Not getting anything here. Is that a polar bear? Yeah, it's a polar oh. bear in a snowstorm. Danny totally white screen. Okay. Totally white screen. <laughs> you guys didn't know it snowed in Indonesia, did you? Yeah, learn but we something new music. every day. <laughs> yeah, incredible. All right, here we go again. Uh, and
I, I perhaps should have said this. Angelique did a nice job in introducing the family and the business. Um, Passport to Paradise actually uh, came about m many years ago, actually with Angelique's sister and her husband, who's from Colorado. They did a Murex and then my father-in-law hooked him up with one of his small liveaboards. This is back in 97. They, they went from Murex and they camped on the beach of Manat, of Banca. And then they took the boat over to and stayed in Limbe Strait at Kukungan Bay Resort which is now unfortunately shut down. Um, and he, we, and then when I and An Angelique and I met, we sort of did a similar thing. And then Dave and I, my brother-in-law, our brother-in-law always had this idea of connecting the three together. And we couldn't quite make it in 2013 when the four of us purchased the business from Angelique's folks on terms. Um, we immediately implemented this passport to paradise and actually Angelique's, cousin Ati who's a big executive in advertising in Jakarta she came up with the with the we were brainstorming on Banka on the beach one night and she came up with this passport to paradise name um okay so we're gonna go through all those things tonight um and um Ken mentioned a little bit about Indonesia and its size it's three time zones just to give you an idea and there we are uh, Bali is where we're standing right where we're sitting right now and it's about a two hour and 20 d minute direct flight of course there's no direct flights happening right now um, but every day three times a day there's good flights from Jakarta over the Singapore to Minato they're supposed to restart that segment this month the end of this month it is no longer with Silk Air Silk Air before COVID they closed down that company. So it's SQ, Singapore Airlines, and then, if you will, their budget airline, Scoot. And that is the service going to be four times a week, if and when, when we get back to normal, Singapore to Monado. And currently, the schedule is the exact same as it had been for years. Now, little tidbit of information. The airport in Jakarta, the third Terminal 3, is new. It's nice, it's great. Qatar flies into there. Many airlines do fly into there. And there is a code share, as of now, with Qatar and Garuda. And Garuda's doing a great job. Plus, you get a little bit of uh, extra weight with dive gear. So there's a few different ways to get there. I suggest, um, you know, as it gets closer to you all wanting to come and visit, uh, we can get into it a little bit more. And Murex can absolutely assist with all the domestic uh, air tickets, um, and including uh, airport escort service in Jakarta and so forth and so on. Okay. okay. Now we'll go to where we are in North Sulawesi. Uh, Jojo chose this map. I think it's a great map. It shows here the topography of the uh, volcanoes. Um, and the, the volcanic lakes up in here, uh, just to give you a, a, a lay of the land. So we have Bunakin, of course, Banka, and Lembe, and hence the Passport to Paradise. We take you from one place to the other by boat. Your luggage arrives magically at the next stop in your room, ready to go. Unless there's only two or four of you on the boat, then the luggage will go ahead with you. Okay. Um, this is the front of the, the beach, but again, you know, the passport to paradise. Um, that's COVID bonk, that's bonker, right, Danny? Through the, Danny, it, that it was, was bonker, yes. right? Yeah. That's correct. The beach and house reefs there are, are, are bonker. As, as a side note, so by we'll the way, the I was going to say, one of the most beautiful reefs I ever dove is that bonker called Sahong. Yeah. It's just around the corner from the yeah. resort. Um, of course, Ken, if we got you to stay in the banca, we can show you a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I knew I was going <laughs> to. I knew that okay. would come up. Uh, you walked into that one, brother. <laughs> I set you up. I set you up. Okay. So we'll, we'll, so we'll um, I break in for just a second. Yes. But um, I know it, it sounds cumbersome going from resort to resort to resort, but it's not. 
it's really it's really easy and danny and angelique have it uh, organized in such a way that it's totally painless for the divers so that's my that's all i have to say you know thank you buck uh for that and and really that's attributed to angelique's father because he trained these guys and we had the liveaboards and they know the currents they know the seas um and you know with an experienced crew like this it'll work um so we're really grateful to that and it's the legacy of uh of being around for so long covid everybody's favorite topic um just know um angelique and our our gm our former gm he, we, we've moved on just because we had no idea how much longer this would go on they've done an excellent job of preparing everybody and we're going to need to redo it all. You know, we thought it was going to be three, four months, right? So did everybody else. Um, but everybody is, is super in touch. And you see them wearing masks. That ain't for the camera. This is the way it is here. Um, and I think in, it, you know, especially I believe it in, in Japan, you've seen it for decades there. People aren't feeling well. They wear a mask. It looks a little weird at first. So I think it was just a natural progression for people here. I mentioned before about some of the opportunities COVID's presented. And here's one, captains learning computers, learning, you know, instead of writing it down on a piece of paper, then bringing it into the office, then having someone in the office, put it in, we're teaching them to just fend for themselves. This is one of my favorite pictures of the whole presentation. You see those big rocks? These guys come with the cigarette in mouth, Sandals. Oh, this guy's wearing boots. Darn, we should have got the barefoot guy. And a big old sludge hammer breaking it down to a uh, uh, foundation stone, a uh, building stone. Uh, uh, we've done a lot of organic gardening. Uh, we backed off on that. It's a ton of work, but we learned a lot and we're going to resurrect it when we know you guys are going to come. Uh, we'll talk more about this, but basically, we're able to uh, do a lot of uh, farm to table um, vegetables and fruits right now. Most of our fruits and vegetables will be farm to table. Okay. And here's how we do it. And Angelique came across a lot of this and did a lot of work in uh, an experimentation with this. This actually is uh, this soap this that soap. you would use to wash your dishes, believe it or not. Okay, but you can come up, pick a tomato off the vine or a cucumber and just munch right into it. It's fantastic. You've got clove, you've got this and some of it you have to, right, Leaky, we have to let it wait and sit for a day or two before you can use it and then shake it up and, and spray it. And of course, it's almost a daily spray versus every other week with pesticides. It's a lot more work, but the results are cool. And, and the yield is not as, as high at sometimes, but it's, it's super cool. Lots of work at all three places. Yeah. Uh, this is cool. Lembe Foundation, which uh, started a few years ago, has been working a lot to help the villages. And they started with this mass program, along with the water distribution, which we'll get into. Um, this here is a super cool technology developed by the Dutch. And a Dutch friend of ours turned, t turned us on to it. You know, most of us on this call have been around a while and, you know, these natural disasters, these disasters that have happened, especially, you know, 15 years ago with the big old tsunami. What did we hear a month after cholera outbreak, cholera outbreak, cholera outbreak? You don't hear it anymore. You don't hear it anymore. And if you do hear it, it's a travesty because they're not using something simple like this. You could take mud water and put it in here, filter it to potable drinking water. Okay. So what we did is, I, I don't even know, I, th I think close to 200 families. And we use this in our home. We distribute it throughout the villages, all our staff and so forth and so on. And we, because they, there is an expense with drinking water. You can buy the aqua or you boil the water and, 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 um, and so they don't have a cost of, of 
clean, drinkable water. The filters are good for two years and we follow up with them. And it was just a, it was just a cool thing we can do. This is a seven minute video on the COVID protocol. Um, if you have some specific COVID questions, maybe put it in the chat and we can answer it now. Uh, fingers crossed. Cross them harder. It's about the this same spot as straight. before. Danny, I'm I'm going to suggest we skip the video because I think we, I'm not sure we got enough bandwidth. Okay, it's a shame because let's see if we could do the, the really the best spot. The best part of it is the last. Danny and Ken, I have this video downloaded. Uh, would it be any help if you made me a co-host and yeah, I played it try. from here? Well, if we could download it to you quickly, we wouldn't he have this issue. He says he's got now. it. I have it. I have already downloaded it. Oh, go for it, Ken. Buck, Buck, you're set up as co-host. Okay, let me see if. Just go for the share. Make sure you check optimize video, optimize audio. And when you go on, it'll boot Danny out. Or Danny, just stop the screen share on your end. I'd love to. I'm frozen again. No, okay. uh, skip. That's not it. Hang on. I had it open. Let me just find it. Danny, while he's doing that, I'm going to see if I can kick you out. Kick, kick me out, Ken. I'll, I'll log on again. It's nothing personal. I'm frozen again. My whole machine is frozen. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. All right. So, Buck. Yeah, you can find the video. By the way, I hope none of you had anything planned for nine o'clock tonight. We're going to go till about midnight or so. And there will be a written test afterwards. So I don't want that. I can see I've got a big market for how to do Zoom seamlessly. That may be our next class. So can you see this? No, I hear it. Okay, okay so Buck, okay. are you on a Mac or a PC? I am on uh, a Mac. So you should do the little up carrot for share screen. Okay. Choose the there video. We go. There you go. Now hit play. And move your cursor off the screen to the right. Yeah, so uh, I want to get back to where Danny left off. So, Danny, you'll have to guide me. Well, then just start this at the beginning. But this isn't the COVID video, right, Buck? No, this is not the COVID video. No, I don't have the COVID video. I have the Lumber Resort. Oh, oh, we thought you were I saying you had the COVID one. video. Sorry. All right, Buck, go ahead and let this play because Danny's not back on yet, I don't think. You want to play it from the start? Okay. Pick it up from here. Turn down the volume a little bit. That's good. Nope, too low. Yeah. This is, I think, our former version of the video, but... It's all I got. It's not the new one. Yeah. So just so you guys know, I'll so narrate a, a little bit too. The, the idea of yeah. Passport to Paradise is you hit all three resorts, roughly three days at each. Start at Murex Monado, which is what you see now. Going to go to Banca, going to go to Lembe. Yeah. But then a lot of this uh, photos of the resort now from Murex Monado, it's, it's, there's a lot of um, innovation they're doing. So a lot of this going to look a lot different. We move some of the rivers. The rooms are looking different now also. I'll show you the photos later at the end of this. So you want, to fa you want me to fast forward, Angelique? 
Nike. Yeah, you can just because it doesn't look like this anymore. Even this restaurant, we already like it's no longer there. The old there. restaurant. It's there, kind of cool. Old, yeah. Hey, there's Danny back again. Danny, to bring you up to speed, we thought Buck had the COVID video. He does not. This is just the regular passport yeah, to paradise. Yeah. Um, we can, can we can send it to you later, and um, okay, you know we can, we can go forward on it. I would say that's Bosphorus back. I recognize that back. Yeah. Buck, I would say go ahead and stop it here with the dolphins and let's let Danny pick it back up and hit the stop share. And Danny, why don't you pick it up after the uh, COVID video, if you can. For what it's worth, for those who've never been, their dive operation operates a lot more smoothly than their Zoom operation does. Uh, can you make me a co-host again? You know, last time I, I made you... Yes, I can. Last time I made you a co-host... Uh, All righty. Fifth time's the charm. I have faith. There you go. So, this... You'll see it's uh, the map with the boats. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It just gives you an idea on how long the the journey is from one location to the other. And the dives along the way are normally, not, not always, but normally dives we won't do from the base location, from each base location. So it's an in-between dive. But do you want to do something again or different? That's that's fine too. Okay. Uh, and Angelique did a great job. This is Monado Bay. Okay, so here's some of the, the new rooms, what we did. We made the front sli sliding doors. Um, all, all, if I'm not mistaken, all the wood that we're used is recycled wood. And like, if you could see my cursor on these, uh, uh, yeah. on these beams, it's all recycled wood from the from either the old restaurant or the old rooms, and it's this beautiful, beautiful hard wood. Nice. And it's you know well these these must have this wood's got to be thirty years old. Um, yeah. So and what we did in, for the most part is we did not you know um, fill in where there were old hinges or anything. We just kept that look. So there's a little bit of a story about it. So when you guys come again, you could say, oh, I remember that hinge that used to be there. And um, maybe that's, yeah. Danny, uh, for those who've been so here, to the resort before, where are those new cottages? Those are on the other side of the pond, Ken. Okay. On the other side of the pond. This table here is super cool. Angelique and I got the idea when we were tra traveling in Ternate, uh, Halmahera which is an archipelago east of North Sulawesi. This is a coconut, the bottom of a coconut tree. It, you wait a while, then you just chainsaw and cut out the, uh, and then smooth it, sand it, varnish it. Here's the inside of the room. What I don't have a picture of is we have uh, international plugs in each room, USB charge in each room, and on the desks and so forth of each room. Okay. And again, again like this, sink top that's recycled wood from the property trees that we either had to cut branches or the trees had to be cut down um and it's all been recycled okay here's the new restaurant the bridge we put bridges we widen this these yellow stones are beautiful we just um uh, harvest them from the side of the hill up the way um the restaurant and bar are are, are, are not done but you see we took out the creek here ken Yep, and and grassed it all in, and of course, there's 20 things we wish we wish we did differently, but that's the way it is. There's Julia, front desk is here. Okay, this is all this wood has been recycled. This is these are coconut, and you see these um, 
blemishes here. They're not blemishes. They're cut in. So guys can use that as steps to climb up the coconut tree. That's great. We take them down. We sand it out. We varnish it. Bob's your uncle. Okay. Here's another look of the river. And you have that nice, you know, nice sound of the river coming down. It's really pretty. All right. Yeah. So the building to the right, Danny, that's the, uh, uh, the dive shop and stuff, right? The yeah. white building. Yeah. So this is what Angelique was chatting about before. This her dad built in the early 80s. Right. This was their family getaway. <clears throat> and then um, my father-in-law's son-in-law once said, hey, we need to forget this family cottage stuff. We need to turn it into a dive center. <laughs> but uh, Angelique and I lived up top here for the first few years of our, of our marriage. Um, and we made it. So that was 20 something years ago, right? Yeah. 21. Um, the but food, who's you guys are going to see a nice, <laughs> a nice uptick on the food without losing the local flair. I want to reiterate that we're still going to have plenty of wonderful, um, uh, um, local food, but the days of the buffets are over. Unless, can you guys as a group, maybe for a barbecue, okay. But for the most part, it, it'll either be a, a la carte or family style. The phase are a thing of the past. And is that COVID related or that's just a shift you wanted COVID. to make? Yeah. COVID. Uh, I think both, but, but both, yeah. But I will interject, yeah. for those who have not been, the food is fabulous. They lay out a feast like you wouldn't believe. Um, and, you know, we've had to uh, uh, accommodate or uh, amend ourselves also to uh, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, all, all, all that type of dietary uh, requirements that are, are now part of the business, which weren't when, uh, when uh, we started back in the day. This gives you an idea on the number of dive and snorkel sites within a very close proximity of the resort, Okay. Um, you know, I think Ken, Buck, when uh, myself, Angelique, when we first started diving Bunaken, yeah, you'd see a turtle. Yeah, maybe a couple a day. It is not uncommon, not uncommon to see 20 turtles on a dive or more. And it's yeah. not the same one coming back. And you can get inches away from these animals and they're, and they're, 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 the turtles are smart and they know divers and snorkelers are not going to hurt them. And it's amazing to see these turtles feed and, and, and so forth. It's, oh gosh, here's another video. Fingers crossed. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's go through the presentation and then yeah. we'll go and try the video. I would skip the videos. We Started a, a free diving center. This fella here at one time was an Indonesian guy. He had the record for free diving. And it's a super cool thing. And more Indonesians. And, and we're getting more and more calls for free diving. It's super cool. I was going to say, I hope though you're not there. training. In the, I hope you're not training in that end of the pool because it's only three feet deep. What's the big deal? Um, I'm kidding. It, it's no, it's in front of the resort. <laughs> uh here we go, right from the pool out to Minato yeah. to a volcano. All right. Uh, tours, which um, super accessible, really great. Tancoco National Park, it's a really easy and a really nice thing to do. Um, it's very different today than again when, when you all were first coming. By virtue of the fact all the, the, the guides have um, uh, hand phones. And so they ring up their friends and say, oh, over, you know, blah, blah. And everybody sees so many cool things now. It's, 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 it's not a hit or miss. It, it's really, and they're doing a good job of protection too. Um, so three locations, Passport to Paradise. Uh, now we're on to Banca. And this is how, she, how it looks there. We have two house reefs in the front. And then also in the back is really pretty. Later, we're going to talk about our... Uh, our coral gardener project and part of that project is here but the coral farm is actually in this comp bay back here 
All right. Oh, and Samantha's just back. Come and meet everybody from California. Come here, Sammy. Um, Ken, you can ask her how she did on her test today. <laughs> How'd you do on your test today, Sammy? I hope I did okay. Oh, it's better than oh. confident. It's better than oh. no, I'm sure you she's did doing okay. great. No, she's doing great. Here's Bonka. Uh, we built and finished these cottages in September of uh, 2017. We did very well. And then, of course, it's shut down. We've just reopened them this week for a Russian guy flying in on a private jet. Um, so he's staying there with his family for a week. All right. This was taken actually last night by Lexi or Julia's uh, iPhone. Nice. All right. Um, this was a super smart and super good investment. Hindsight being 2020. Uh, we literally never during this COVID, unless we have guests and it's only for a few hours, we never turn on our generator now. And we have a lot of friends every day. They have to turn on their generator to charge this, do that, do the other thing. This is 7,500 Watts, uh, which powers uh, what we did during COVID is we put all the mattresses, sheets, towels, everything in a double room that you, one of the new ones, and we alternate every other day, the AC. And it keeps things uh, from, from getting moldy and, and all that. And, you know, of course, some staff are there and, and whatnot. It's, it's a super cool thing. It, we got it from the guys called Solar Power Indonesia. And uh, during the day, we don't need to turn our generator on, even with a full, full, full house. Now, on Banca, unless you request it during the day, the AC won't go on. But you'll have a fan in your room and you have a charge station in your room. And it's normally enough. If somebody's under the weather or something like that, uh, we can turn on a couple of the room ACs. They're all, uh, in, all the MCBs are switched individually so we can have that flexibility. Okay. And again, Danny, the food uptake is... Danny, how about filling tanks? Will it fill tanks as well? Uh, no, it's only 7,500 watts, Buck. Uh, That's, that, it, there are dive centers... In the, I know of a couple that are 100% solar. Of course, they have the genset backup, generator backup. But uh, filling tanks, one compressor uh, would require more than 7,500 watts, for example. So, yes, yeah. we have a super generator for that. And, of Thank course, you. you need backup generators anyway. And this is, this is, uh, this is what you get. Or dive guides, um, these slates are something that go with each guide to help you identify what you're looking at. They're super well-trained. We've had uh, marine biologists train them. Here's some of the diving at Murek, at sorry, at Banca. Um, this is the hound, Ken. Both of them. Recognize those and, orange um, corals. Yeah. And from Sahang to Dugong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah super colorful reefs yep not uncommon to see dolphins and here's your relaxation this where my cursor is this is the northern tip the absolute tip of the main island of Sulawesi when you look at the map this tip right here this island behind it is Lembe Island. So there's Lembe Island, there's Salat Lembe or Lembe Strait. Um, so that's to give you an idea right from the, the beach there. This is the house reef and kids snorkeling. Um, yeah. Got the paddle boards and a lot of different things going on. Yeah. Super fun, super relaxing. Here's Coral Gardner. So we partnered with a French and a Canadian woman couple of years ago. This partnership has just been fantastic. Um, they're super knowledgeable. They've trained a lot of our guides. They've trained Andrew on coral identification and different coral. And, and we give courses now. We will we, we'll need to gear up again. But we were regularly giving a different series of courses depending upon what people want. And you can actually come and take coral from the farm, which is now completely loaded. You can't even see the sand underneath this um, and transplant it onto these 
type of structures in another area that had some storm damage and we're, we're reconfiguring the reef there and it's, it's working really well. Okay. Here's a more recent um, picture and, and different types of coral, even soft coral. And, you know, it's a labor of love and learning a lot. So this lettuce coral um, grows super fast and you can see this was 18 months of 18, uh, 22 months of growth, 22 yeah. months of growth. Oh, and then on Banca, we also have the volleyball court and the best the uh -huh. badminton court. So, uh, yeah, for a group of people or family, it was really fun thing to so do. The after. Indonesian Olympic volleyball team. <laughs> the Banca team. Yeah, yeah. the Banca, the, the Banca <laughs> Olympics. Badminton, you guys better watch out, man. Yeah. They're lanky and it's unbelievable, these guys in badminton. It's like, okay. So we're, Danny, we're, off, Danny, to, there, we're off to Lembe. Danny, there's two questions in the chat real quick. Is there a best time to visit in general and do we have any idea when Indonesia might open back up? Sure, we can we can field that question now as I turn or or, the page or get to them later. Me. Just just be aware they're there. Yeah. Best times to visit are end of March, April, May, June, and then again end of September, October, and into November. Now, Angelique's dad always said May and October are the two best months. So then, of course, your shoulder months are as good. As we know, and it, as we're experiencing, weather changes. Um, so, you know, December can go either way. January, early January can go either way. Normally, it's pretty nice. Um, is that to say you're not going to get any rain? It's not like in the South Pacific where, or, even, or even Northern Thailand. Um, it's much more mild. And I'm not going to say we never get a full day of rain, but it's not very common. Um, it's very temperate. The second question, when Indonesia is going to open up, um, <laughs> well, as I said before, Scoot, right, Lee? Scoot Air is you can buy, you can get a ticket the end of May, but Singapore Airlines said the same thing for May the fifth from Singapore to Bali, and then they postponed that. Um, if someone really wants to come, you can get a different kind of visa and come in. If you want to spend some time, it's a six month visa um, after. 30 days, if I'm not mistaken, you have to get it. Re you have to just get an update at the immigrations. Y you can come in now. If you go to certain uh, on Bali here, what's bringing back tourism are the surfers. Surfers and cyber nomads. You go into some areas like Changu, even here in Sanor, Ubud, it's loaded with expatriates. Um, they just wanted to get out of their home country, come to Indonesia, and um, uh, so you can come in, but as far as when tourist visas are being granted, we'll let you know as soon as it happens. Yeah. Um, and then oh, as, it, as it stands yeah. at the moment, uh, you would still have to do the five days quarantine also. Five so days quarantine to, once you get to, there. Yeah. yeah. So once the, once the airport in Manado open, we hope that you can quarantine, quarantine at the resort and then just at our place. You mean, and then not at the city hotel or something like that. Right. Yeah. And then just go from there. Um, you know, they're taking it very seriously. And, and I would say as a foreigner living here, um, people are on board with the situation and, and they're complying. And you see PR ads by governors, by the president and so forth, asking people to wear their masks. At, you know, and, and just the nor wash the hands, the normal protocol. Um, is every single person on the street complying? No, but when they're going into a public area, it seems like it seems like they are. When the Balinese are here and they're doing a ceremony, what I see is people wearing masks and stuff like that. Now, um, just FYI, Angelique and I, um, JoJo has not, but Angelique and I have gotten our first vaccination 
all of our staff um, has gotten their first vaccination. Some of them, their double, their second vaccination. And that's because Indonesia is treating tourism workers as front line. Okay. So of course, politicians first <laughs> and um, people with money first, but us normal folks working in tourism and, and the, and the distribution is unbelievably well organized. And I, and I, we think it's because, you know, on Bali, you have what's called the Banjar system where they're used to a community center where they come for their information for anything in, in Monado, it's the, it's the uh, similar, but with the churches and so forth. So people are used to coming together, getting their information and dispersing. Um, and it's, it's very well organized. I should go and get you my card. They give us, it's, it's, it's super. Um, okay. And, and it's very polite, very gentle. And you even get a box of food if you like it when you go for your vaccination. There if you, you have go. to wait. Here you get a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> oh, wow. It's true. Um, this is Lembe Resort. And by the way, last time Buck and his group came, they did Lembe first, then Banca, and then finished in Monado. Same difference. I think the biggest question is where you want to finish your diving. Right, Buck? So uh, um, those of you who haven't been there yet, it's lovely. Do a great job. Super good service. Um, yeah. And uh, rooms were renovated 17 and 18, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Right on the water. Great views. Nice amenities. These are the garden view rooms uh, next to the behind the, the restaurant. Spacious, comfortable, different price point. And this is the view. Man, this is the view. And this is the highest volcano in, in the province, Klabat. And Ken, if you remind us next time you're here, we'll tell you of our epic family journey, which Angelique was wise enough to skip. Uh, we'll tell you yeah. about that journey one night. Fabulous. Super fun. Here's the Lembe food. And the, this is the breakfast set up and probably breakfasts are going to continue to look somewhat like this. We're not sure yet. We're and it depends on what people want. Okay. Bartender Dickey. Uh, we've got five boats in Lembe alone, trying to keep small groups. Uh, nice, nice focus on, on service from guides to, 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 you know, and, and the diving in Lembe is kind of weird. And for those who've been there, you can attest to this. And those who have not, um, on your first dive, they're going to tell you all this great stuff and blah, blah, blah. You're going to go down on your first dive and you're going to say, what, what am I doing on this dive? This is, this is stupid. This is really, you guys, I'm pissed. And then all of a sudden the guy's going to call you over. You may hear a little thing and you're going to like, what is that? And then you're going, what is that? And it's super cool. It's super cool. You will Here's our more, camera room. I was going to say, you'll yeah. see more unique creatures in the Lembe Straits than anywhere else in the world. The first dive I did there, I jokingly wrote in my log, well, that was a waste of 250 shots because that's how many pictures I took in the first hour going, oh, 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 haven't seen that, haven't seen that, haven't seen that, haven't. Yep. Um, you know, it was funny, back in the film, I was just thinking about this, uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Rotman, he came, he would take four cameras on a dive. He had a, he had a dive guy just carrying cameras back in the film. Day. So you see all the charging stations and so forth, well lit, camera rooms, super spacious, um, this is something that for many years we tried to get it together with Backscatter and we finally did it in 2019 and we launched this in, in oh, September, yeah, it says right there, September of 2019. Um, and we've got a, a, a full photo center there and Murex also benefits from it, from all the training, repair, rental, we pull from there and we've just got a, a this is, you know, I can't speak highly enough of uh, backscatter and the super cool things we'd like to do together and some of the super cool things that we have done. 
and silly me, I forget it. They came out with a snoot before Thanksgiving. And you know what they did? They are, because our photo pro went back to the UK. And again, thinking it was a couple of months. Well, it dragged on. They flew him over and had him stay with us and beta test all their new gear. And then they launched it. It was super cool. I hope you bought one. Here's inside. This is our partner, Ray, for many years. His father and Angelique's uncle were best friends. And that's how we were invited onto the project. And we've been together. It's 18 years now. So it's great. And that's Jim Decker, the CEO of um, Backscatter. Okay. Here's another video, which we'll skip and, and, and wait until the end. And just all the There's the cool blue things. ring. Yeah. Yep. They're about the size of your This guy's thumb, actually not. Yeah. Flamboyant cuttlefish. Not venomous, by the way. Mandarin fish. Here's a video which we'll skip. And one and I, as we chat and take the questions, I'll scroll back and, and try to get uh, some of the videos going. This is just off the charts, super cool. Um, Blackwater, you've probably read about it, heard about it. If you haven't done it, it's worth trying to do. The bonfire dives for me is is um oh, I love is even cooler. it's even cooler and the reason is because um you can also enjoy a normal night dive and then come back to the bonfire if you commit to the blackwater dive you're on the blackwater dive and um in our area it's it's in north Sulawesi. you know we're we're very close to the epicenter of of of, of where coral life uh, uh began which was in Raja Ampat. So it's not, blackwater dives are not really hit or miss, but some hit better than others. Um, and we could talk more about this um, later if you like, but here's some of the things that we see. This is just a compilation between blackwater and um, bonfire. Okay. Stuff you, you, you will not see on a normal dive, on a, even on a normal night dive. Lembe Foundation, I, I, I spoke a little bit about it, but these fine women really helped put this together and it was going great. You know, trash banks and education uh, a, a, a building, a library was going, kids engaged, uh, guests really supportive. Um, yeah, and you know, what, what can you do? It, it, it stopped now, but um, it'll be resurrected again. Um, I guess... You all know what we mean by BC here, why everybody's all bunched in together. BC, BC, come on, Ken. No. Ken. Boy COVID. Buoyancy compensators. Before They're all buoyancy compensators. Before COVID. Oh, that. There you go. We, I use the phrase before times. Here's some stuff you can do. Uh, people donated. This is also how we gave away a bunch of the uh, water filters. Um, January next year, we have this, our annual workshop. Um, this year's workshop was actually pretty cool. I didn't not want to do it. So we did a two day just with our local guys and they loved it. It was fantastic. Um, and we, we just did it in house, you know, so we're going to stick next year will be our 10th. And many of you probably know Aaron and also Joel and Jen. Um, they do a super great job. So they'll be over in Lembe um, for two workshops in January and February. Come End on. of slideshow. Click to exit. There we go. Ah, okay. I'll scroll through now and try to get some of the videos going, but if we have some questions. Yeah. If, if you guys have questions, I'll try to see. I'm, it's fine. I'm using my laptop and I got it sitting further away. That's why I keep going like that. So if you have a question, just Can sort of literally see? raise your hand and Brad, I see your uh, hand first. So Danny, you're first up. Yeah. Danny, you mentioned bonfire, but didn't really explain 
what that means. Is that a light set up underwater to create a certain effect? Or I doubt it's a yeah. real fire unless you guys are really onto something there. <laughs> um, are you all seeing this video now that I have playing? No, no. You'll, get, you'll need to share a screen with it. All right. Hold on. And then I'll talk over the yeah. video. Oh. Fingers crossed. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I'll go down. Switch off the volume. But if you want okay. to talk over it. Bonfire dive is... We have four seventy five or 10,000... We have four uh, video lights. We go out. The boat goes out. We place the lights down at 12, uh, uh, you know, 30, 40 feet, 30, 40 feet. We've already experimented with the area. We place the lights down. We wait a good 20 minutes. Let's see what comes by. And then we do the dive. Mm -hmm. And then the light, the bonfire lights will move once and then normally a second time as we ascend on the dive. So, um, and that's what it's all about. Just seeing what's, what's out there in the, in the middle of the night. Normally we depart a little bit later than our normal, mm -hmm. uh, departure time. Next video. Yeah. So that was a, thank you. Of, yeah. That's a lot of juvenile stuff that would come up during that bonfire or black mm -hmm. uh, water dive. A lot of larval okay. stuff too. A lot Danny, of larval. Danny, we got a question yeah, yeah. from the uh, from the chat from Lizette, who wants to know. You'll love this. Is three days enough at each spot at each resort? No. You know, last time Buck came, there was only one complaint from everybody in his group. Why didn't we stay longer? Um. You know, in Europe at the German show, we open up with a 50 night package, five, five, and five. Y'all, if, if you're retired, what else do you have to do? Just so you guys know, you know those are gone. I usually three, do. Three, three, three. It's a lot. It, 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 you know, come for a little bit longer. Chill out for a day. Just do two dives one day. Hang out. You know, go to the park. Um, what yeah. it is may sound funny, and we're not doing it now, of course. When you're in Minato at Murex, we're taking people to the movies. They're all first run movies. The theaters are fantastic. They serve it, and it's like three dollars. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, come and stay longer. Can we do it in three, three, three? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. But what we could do, if you only have the nine nights, we could do a five and four, and from Monado, drive past, cruise past Banca and do a day of diving there, and then go into Lembe Strait and spend there. And if you wanted to do a day diving back at uh, Banca, we can. So uh, what's, the, what's the next video? So that was the Banca video. Yeah, well, while Danny's hunting for the video, I'll tell you what I do. So Buck, Buck can do the Passport Paradise, three days, three days, three days. I do nine days at Murex Monado with a one-day trip to Banca and a one-day trip to Lembe. But the bottom line is you can book, you know, if you wanted to create your own package, you can do whatever you wanted. And a lot of it is based around when the flights come in, go out. We usually fly in on a Monday and fly out on Wednesday because that's just the way it works out with the airline schedule. But you can, you know, to sort of get back to your question, was that like Danny said, you could do a five, five, five. You could do a five, three, five. You could do whatever, whatever works. And that was the last short video for uh, Bunakin. Okay. I mean, the other thing I'll mention the screen here. that 
with, with Lembe. Lembe is muck diving, which is hard to find small critters. But there's now a lot of good muck sites around Monado Bay as well that when I first started diving there in 2000, we didn't know existed. So, um, and some of them are literally a five minute run from your ex Monado. So you've got a really good variety of stuff no matter where where you go. Who else has a question? You can raise your hand. Um, Tom has a question. Can you get there from Toraja? Um, where is Toraja? Well, to be honest with you, okay, uh, let's go back to, that's a really good question. And we sure as heck hope so, because we're going there for va family vacation once the kids are out of school. Where, uh, Danny, uh, where is Toraja? Yep, yep, we're going to show you. Okay. We're going to show you in just a second. I have okay. great faith. So this bay, you see the red dot that, oh, can you see this? Yeah. Yes. The map? Okay. The red dot, of course, yes. is Bonato. This bay is Tamini Bay. And Taraja is right where that cursor. Oh, Taraja, gotcha. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Togians. Taraja is right where the cursor that is. is down. Right where the cursor South is now. I see. So you would fly from Monado to Makassar, and it's an eight-hour drive up there. It's Please. a nice drive. Taraja is fantastic. There's a couple of sites to see along the way. It is a long drive. Um, there's no more air service from Taraja elsewhere. Okay? But to give you an idea of what we're going to do as a, a, a family is we're going to start here couple of three nights three nights in Taraja then we're going to drive up here stay at the lake here and then drive here and go to the Togions how about that Taraja yeah. is super cool highly recommend it yeah super cool yeah you know, we we drove yeah. from Tana Taraja down to Ujung Pandang yeah and then flew from there up to Manada yes yeah but that was that was many years ago it was quite an adventure and Tom, yeah. I'm it's, happy it's, to yeah, help you with that like trip. That. Uh, um, Edie, Edie happy wants to help you with that trip. There's a, there's a, uh, uh, there's a, a friend of ours in 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 Makassar in Ujung Pandang that have a tour company that do a great job. I forget yeah. their name, but I'm happy to give you that information if if, if you want. Uh, Edie wants to know: Are they? I'm not sure who they is. Going to accept the vaccination passport. Let me, let me interject one thing first. Vaccination passport is right now vaporware. Nobody's got them. Nobody knows how they'll work. It's a country to country type of thing, but they don't really exist. It's just people have been talking about it. Um, so I don't know, Danny, have you uh, any of the tourism industries had any in Indonesia had any thought about that? I mean, the thought is basically if you show that you're vaccinated, come right in exactly and it we we were hearing hearing talk about that but nothing is definitive um the economy of indonesia tourism especially bali and north sulawesi is so dependent upon tourism um i would imagine that they would they they would uh, initiate such a thing yeah yeah, but that that'll either that'll be a worldwide passport thing, and yeah, it, it, I, I don't. I mean, I don't see it being something that. Oh yeah, we'll have it in place by September, because I think there's, you know, it's like with any passport program, you know, that you you need to you need to get a lot of international agreement on how exactly it's gonna gonna work. Yeah. Let alone there's enough vaccines. Like when I was talking with JoJo earlier, she was mentioning the Chinese vaccine not available in the US. So would someone with a Chinese vaccine passport be allowed into a country where the Chinese vaccine has not been authorized? Don't know. A lot of politics is going to go on with that. Anyone else got a question? You Elaine, know, it seems like your hand or just scratching your neck? Pain. What'd you say, Buck? <laughs> scratching your neck. It, it seems <laughs> like... Um, it seems like COVID protocol is changing every week. So what they're telling us now is not necessarily going to be the case 
like our our trip is not till next year so right. things are changing all the time and and uh, i was having this discussion with someone else today you know don't forget different parts of the world are under very different things los angeles which used to be one of the worst places in the u.s is now one of the best within the space of a couple of months uh bon air which had been open for tourism just went through a lockdown I was talking with a guy today in Ontario, Canada. They're on a full lockdown in Ontario. Can't leave his house pretty much. So the situation is so different in so many different parts of the world. You know, there is no uniformity to, to what the situation is, which again makes the implementation of things like vaccine passports or, you know, will you have to quarantine or not quarantine a, a very difficult there's no one size fits all. And Mark, I got a question. So, so. Um, oh, and you even have your hand soon, up, Mark. Very good. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah okay. So, uh, how how quickly do they, do they expect to get the general population in Indonesia vaccinated? I I. I can't even take a stab at that. I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's the world's largest archipelago. It's arguably probably the most difficult country to distribute these vaccines. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's moving along. It's moving along. It's not like in the U.S., but no other countries like the U.S. with the distribution right now. And I, what, I can say Indonesia seems a lot smoother than 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 Germany, for example. Um, so what's, what's the population? It's not at the point. Danny, population Indonesia. Yeah, two fifty million, two hundred fifty million. Okay. fourth most populated country in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's moving along. You know. Well, that, thinking, and, that, that's what really allowed is allowing us to reopen and people enough people getting vaccinated. So that sure. that seems to me to be the key for if it's possible. Maybe it's not possible. I don't know. Um, it, it'll take more of a time, but you know, then then on the other side, there's no stigma attached to the vaccine. Um, people are just going to get it, and um, people are looking forward to getting back to normal. And there's not going to be, you know, what it, it doesn't matter. Policies, but there's none of this anti-vaxxer sentiment through, through from Indonesians. If they hear it, it's it's from the foreigners, quite frankly. So um, there's none of that. You know, the comply, get online. Here it is. It's available to you. Let's go. And uh, I don't know how. It's been hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, disbursements so far, and no, from what more. we know, it's free. How many yeah. billions? I mean, I'm just on bottom. Yeah. Up, up till the 11th of May, they said there's already 13.6 million people that's already got vaccinated. And then for their so first uh, phase, that's 33. That's 33 percent. That's 33.7 percent. No, how, how many? How many, Angelique? 13 million? 13. 13 one, million, three? 600,000 people. Well, 13, but 13 yeah, million 13, of 250 one, is, three. that's 5%. <clears throat> yeah, for the first phase, they were targeting 40 million. Okay. Um, and then for that first COVID, but yeah, but they're, they're, it's moving there. I don't know when everybody's going to get vaccinated, right. but it's wh going to be a while. Elaine? Which vaccine is, is it? Is it is it the Chinese vac uh, vaccine? Or no, right right now we have the British vaccine, the AstraZeneca. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. E Elaine, you had your hand up and then you put it down. Did you have a question? Uh, I was I was clapping. She was clapping. <laughs> oh, okay. I was Sorry. Clapping because I'm I'm thrilled that the people there in Indonesia um, uh, are not fighting getting vaccinated. We've got people here who are who are objecting to getting vaccinated. Yeah, in so. Europe also. Um, no, they're not. They're not fighting the compliance. Or is everybody happy about it? No. 
Um, Tom, Tom is asking a question. Is there a website we can get the? You know, I do know a Facebook group. Um, we are probably not updating our website as diligently as we should. Um, let me let me poke around with that where you can get the latest travel restrictions. There are a couple internationally and they, they keep on that, but I can, I can get back with um, uh, Ken on that. Yeah. Or if you'd like, even join this Facebook group, this, uh, uh, I think she's a Belgian woman and yeah. I, and she keeps or, up to date on everything. It's, it's pretty sick. It's yeah. uh, I, I've stopped watching all this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Usually Tom, if, if you Google, Whatever the country is and COVID restrictions, you'll probably get to whatever that country's official site is. Like I've been keeping an eye on Bonaire. Um, you can also go out on the U.S. State Department uh, website and um, enter the country and they'll give you uh, a four level travel restriction. Four is bad. Red, don't go. Uh, and it will tell you why and what, whatever else. Um, be aware also that a lot of the State Department sites, they're, they're very extremely cautious, having nothing to do with COVID. Um, so you sometimes take the State Department with a grain of salt because they like sort of say, ah, don't go everywhere. Everywhere is dangerous. Don't go. But um, you can get some information there. But usually a lot of times do country and COVID restrictions on Google. You should get some useful information. Anyone Jojo, else? Jojo, yeah, go ahead. Jojo. Just pulled up the Facebook group. She'll send you that the name of that group, Ken. Okay. While well, it's Bali COVID 19 update. There's also Jackie, yeah, Jackie and, Pomeroy. And Angelique has posted a uh Bali COVID 19. I'll put it in yeah. the chat. Have have her put yeah, have her posted yeah. in the chat. Angelique has also posted something yeah. in the chat you guys can look at and copy. Yeah, that's uh, from the that's from the Indonesian tourism government. Yeah. So. Anyone else have questions? I'll see what I get us off of COVID that actually deal with diving. Glenn, you have a question? Unmute, Glenn. There you go. Yes. Um, how, about how many dives a day um, are is possible? Yeah, yeah. So that's a good question. Thanks for asking that. We didn't get into that. Sorry. Um, normally, we do a three dive program, okay? Which would mean you have a choice. You can leave the resort, do three dives on the boat and have lunch on the boat. You can go out and do two dives and come back, have lunch at the resort and go back out in the afternoon or go back out at night. You could do those three dives, do a night dive. House Reef is always open. Um, in Lembe, you could do, and even Banca, um, and and if you're doing, if we're doing around the coast of, of, of Monado, you could do a dive return, dive return. Um, we're pretty flexible, and we want you to do as much diving as you'd like to do. Um, and and the house the house reef is always available, and all three house reefs are worth doing, and should be dived while you're there. Um, Banca House Reef is, is, is super rich with, um, coral and so forth. And there's a, lo a lot more current flow there. So the only restrictions on the front house reef would be, uh, uh, current, but the back house reef would always be open. Yeah. Cause it's in a protected bay there. Danny, is the trail still down on the house reef, uh, at Monado? A yes. little trail that was laid out. Yes. Yeah. And, and I love we currently that. have a couple of really nice young women interns, uh, the daughter of a friend of ours uh, and her friend, and they're working on that. Actually, Basra, Basra got them going on that. Yep. And so just so you guys know what we're talking about. Everything. Yeah, the house, the house reef in Monado, you literally walk walk into the water. It's an extremely hard surf entry. The surf sometimes is as much as half half an inch high um, and you go out and you start and there's a little marker and you just drop down and there's literally a marked trail with, as I recall, there's some upside down 
you know, bottles that mark things and you just follow it, follow it around. And it, it's a, it's a nice little dive. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> question about from um, Robin about the average depth of dive. Yeah. So what would you say? Can, I mean, well, first dive, second dive, you know, I mean, Max usually, is feet. I'll say, yeah, I'll say what we do a lot of times. We usually, last time, we were doing the two dives back for lunch, one dive plan. We do the first two dives over at Banakan, which is the island across uh, the bay. Uh, those are mostly wall dives. So we would do the first dive 100 feet or so, but we're doing multi level. So we're finishing up the last 15, 20 minutes at 20 feet, do the second dive. 60, 80 feet, but these are relatively vertical walls. Come back for lunch. And then a lot of times we would do the third dive as a Monado Bay muck dive. So you could dive those shallow or sometimes we hit, you know, 50, 60 feet, depending again on, on where we are. And the nice thing there was the boats. Danny upgraded the boats a couple of years ago. So the boats are faster now. So Danny was about an hour and a half, maybe hour to make the depending on where you're going to make the crossing over. Um, oh, Minato to Bunaka now is, is 30, 35 minutes. Yeah. So to the front part of it. You go over and do Bunaka, a couple yeah. of dives, come back. We're back at noon for lunch. We go out again around two. And you're back at 3.30. And now you've either got the afternoon for afternoon tea, or you can do a house reef dive. You could do a night dive to sort of Glenn to go back to what your question was. If you were, when we were all younger and could go balls to the wall, you could do five a day easily. You could do, th you know, two dives, come back for lunch, do a muck dive, come back and do the house reef dive, have a little snack, go out and do a night dive. Come back, do a midnight dive, screw sleep, who needs it? We're young, 3 a.m. dive, come back at 5 a.m., <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Uh, the Those good, were the days. Um, the good old days when we dove forever. Good old days. <laughs> Five dives. Yep. <laughs> we don't want to skip happy hour, though. Okay. In your, in your <laughs> dreams. But seriously, three, di three dives a day is easy. And the nice thing about coming back, we used to do a lot of them as three dives with, uh, and we'd have lunch on the boat, which was also cool because they, they leave sort of the the stuff stays like near the engine and everything is amazingly warm, even at, even at lunch. But um, the nice thing about doing the out and back is if you only want to do two dives, now you're back at the resort. If you want to skip the two morning dives and just do the afternoon dive, great, sleep in, have lunch, and then we go out and do the dives. So there's a lot of flexibility here. And again, not to blow too much smoke up Danny's ass, but they really do run a great operation, very accommodating. You rarely will hear the word no um it'll be give us a second we'll figure it out well, ken so, hears the word no ken well i hear the word no all the time but you know it's k-n-o-w uh, as in yeah. i don't know we so, have nitro also so i mean the old man gas no <laughs> hey 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 what's that hey, old man hey, crap hey 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 <laughs> Why um, old man crap? You don't look that old to me, Ken. There you go. <laughs> I actually, so, I, I actually, but that's a good point. I'll bring up a, a thing about the nitrox, and I don't remember. Are you guys charging extra for nitrox, or is that just included in the regular package? In in with a group like you, with a, a group anymore, we just put it right into the package without okay. any question. If you don't want nitrox, you've already paid for it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So. Many years ago, before Ken came on his first trip to Murex, um, I'm sure none of you have had this experience with Ken, but um, lists of questions. And uh, back and forth with questions. He wanted to know about the tea. And then what kind of tea? Is it high tea or low tea? I said, I don't know. It never got me high. Uh, um, <laughs> and then the house reef and the night dives on the house reef. And the final question that Ken asked me, and no more questions after this until he arrived at the resort. This was the final question. He said, until, and, and after six or eight house reef night dive questions, maybe two, uh, he asked, until what time can we dive a night dive on the house reef? And I simply answered, 
until the sun comes up. Yeah, there you go. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> until it ain't no night, no mole. As you can tell, Danny, <laughs> so that, Danny, that, that's right, how flexible Danny and I have like known each be. other a long time and have many stories. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, Danny, we that, that was the correct answer. That is. <laughs> you know, one thing, if I may just uh, uh, say, um, I know many of you were friends of Die, And, um, yeah, we were really sad to hear that. She yeah. was a special woman. And especially this last trip, we, we just, her and I really super connected. And it was just a lovely time we had with her. And, um yeah, we're very sorry to, to, to hear that. Very sorry yeah. to hear that. So, um, yeah. And she, lo she Robin loves. Robin is asking it. about Love black going. water dive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Robin, a, a black water dive is is kind of just just what it 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 indicates. We go out where it's deeper. Night okay. dive. You want a deep? You want a deeper area. Um, 80, 100 plus at depth. The boat goes out, and again, we drop the lights down. Okay. And you would go down with a, a, a pipe, a, a video light as well. We also add lights to the top of the boat. And the idea is to attract what's around. And they see the light. It's best done at a dead moon. Full moon is not as good. You're tethered to the boat. So there's a max of six people. You're actually tethered. You don't want to be lost. Drop your torch on, a, on one of these dives. And the boat just moves along. We don't want to be in current. But the boat is naturally going to move along. The guides, if it's, if it's six guests, there'll be two guides. There's four guests, there'll be two guides. If there's maybe three, just one guide. And the boat moves along, and you're down at about six, um, um, 15 feet maximum. Okay. 15, one, one five. And you hang out for a while. Oh, 15 meter. Meters or feet? No, four meters. So, so, so 45, so 45 50 feet. Six meters. No, no, not that deep. <laughs> we won't go that deep. Unless you have experience doing it. I would say your wife is saying 15 meters. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she did that. We won't do that at first with guests. Unless you have experience. Unless we already know there's something a little. Yeah. But you don't need to. You don't need to. That light is going to draw things up. And yes, we can go deeper. But on your first one, it's not so really 15, recommended. 15, 20 feet deep. Yeah, yeah, and, and that way you hang out for a while. The, the deal is you want to hang out. You want to hang out. Yeah, and that's a black that's a black water dive. I'm trying to think of our friend in, in the Philippines who's written a book. To, uh, he was going to come and do a workshop with us, and then COVID hit. Black, yeah, so Robin, yeah, black, black water dive. It's in it's in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Basically. And yeah, and, and the perfect place for us to do it between Manado and uh, Bunaken there because it's a very deep trench. So there's a lot of uh, all the the video lights can attract all kinds of uh, planktons and then some fishes as well. Yeah. And Being Robin, just, bait, just so you know, <laughs> sort of black black water diving is not just confined to Indonesia. It's sort of the hot little <laughs> thing to offer everywhere. I mean, I know they do them in Bonaire. There's some people who do them even out here, between here and Catalina. So, um, mm -hmm. it it again, as as Angelique said, it's just a deep water dive. That's where the, the black comes from. Well, you're up up in the upper area, yeah. and the lights hopefully are attracting, you know, things that say, "Oh, wh where's that light?" Which is why, as Danny said, it's not good on a full moon because then you know they're attracted to the moon. Yeah. Any other right. questions? In essence, it's a night dive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Unless a night dive in the said, middle of the ocean. So it, Danny said you can stay until the, the, the uh, oh, I hear that going. My refrigerator's going off. Um, <laughs> you can stay until morning and then it's no longer a black water dive. Excuse me. I'll be right back. <laughs> Wait, then it turns into a blue water dive. Yes. Yes. 
yeah if you do it if you do it in the middle of the of the day then it's a blue water dive <laughs> doing it in the middle of the ocean and if basically. you encounter a shark it's a black and blue water dive. no no reef around it's like right in the middle of the blue water so there's a whole migration a vertical migration that happens oh. every day Right. Um, and you're going to see uh, mostly uh, cephalopods, uh, you know, the the things that are not fish, yeah. bony fish generally. So it's a good experience. I did it once and it was wonderful. It's like on the on the slides Danny showed, the little things, they're all a lot of times you mm -hmm. get larva and little juveniles and, and stuff like that. So, again, stuff you won't normally see during the day or otherwise. Mm -hmm. or on a reef yeah. any other questions all right yeah, just to follow up on that so if you wanted to do do the black water dive does that mean you would do it on the the boat three boat trip to, to the three different resorts you could choose where to do it oh okay um normally uh because we you know during normal times we're doing it fairly often um we could tell you what's hitting at each location and then you could choose. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, to me, Mark, the logical places to do it because of the depth around would be either for, at Monado or Banca. I don't know. You do know. Them? Let me, let me you do get Lembe? down. We'll, we'll go a little bit. We'll go a little bit more North. Oh, okay. okay. We probably do more blackwater dives at Lembe than, than the other two locations, but that that's just the type of, diver we get to yeah because so. people people at lembe if you don't know guys they're, they're looking for little stuff anyhow so when you say hey let's go out black water we'll look at little stuff cool let's go <laughs> any yeah. other final questions <laughs> all righty well it's uh it's thank bed, you so much it, ken i would say it's bedtime here and lunchtime really everybody can do you can do the applause one way or the other um i i will tell you and i'm uh, Buck, when, when's your trip? You got your trip scheduled already to go back? Yeah, we're going um, fall next. We're going, um, we're leaving uh, October 28th okay. next year. Right. I don't have we're my two, trip. We're doing a, we're doing a full um, two Wait. weeks because I bowed to Danny's peer pressure. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I don't have my return book, but as I think I said in the newsletter, there's a couple of places in the world because of my relation, what I feel is my relationship or, or they just snooker me along and pretend they like me. But certainly, you know, Murex is at the top of the list to go back. We go a lot of times in July because we work it around Marilyn Lawrence and Shirley Perry's uh, birthdays, which are July, both July 8th. So, um, but by the same token, I want to make sure just from a reef seeker standpoint, I'm not ready to book any trips until I'm relatively certain we're going to be able to go because I really don't like taking your money, sending it on, and then not able to get it back, and you have to get credits and whatever. Not that Danny and, and Angelique would do um, that. I have a different relationship if I, if with them. I may, yeah. If I may, we have what we're calling a peace of mind booking policy. You don't need to put any money down. It's a now, good way to do it. Here's what's happening, Ken. All these groups that have been postponed, guess what? Our calendar for 20, even, even the end of this year, 22, yeah. 23, is becoming jam packed. So you can block dates and just keep them open. And unless someone else is ready to pony up and put down a deposit, those dates are yours. If someone else does want to put up a deposit, you have first right of refusal. Cool. And this is another another very good point. I mean, you guys, that's right. You always come in July. Someone asks about the weather. You always have a great time in July. You yeah. never have an issue. Fabulous. Right? And we got a little rain here and there. We had an issue on one day. Yeah. The very yeah. first time, very first year, we had an issue on one of the days. Yeah. What's Not your good. maximum occupancy? Well, right now, because of the renovations, uh, I'd say 11 rooms in Monado. Right now, if you came today, uh, 
20 in Banca and 20 in Lembe. Yeah, 20. So but 20. Not, not 18, 18 in Banca. I mean, in, in general terms, Robin, you know, maybe 20, 30 people. I've been there with other groups. I think the most I've ever been there with is maybe, maybe 20 people all together. And a lot of times that's because I had like 12 people. I try to keep my groups at 12 or under. So we just make it all on one boat without the boat being too crowded. And Buck, how many? Um, how many how do we get a hold of you? Tom, you know how and, to get a hold of me. Oh, you weren't talking to no, me, were you? <laughs> uh, shoot me a note, Tom, and I'll get I'll give you Danny's email. But it's real easy to remember. Yeah, thank you. Danny um, at murexdive.com. Thank you. So, by the way, too, uh, next month we will be breaking ground. Angelique's sister and brother-in-law, they have a piece of land next to Murex. And they're actually going to, we're actually breaking ground on a, on a villa project, which is cool. kind of exciting. And just let the cat out of the bag and we'll give you some more information as that develops. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for your patience through our little uh, technical glitches at the beginning. But most of you stuck around. So that's a lovely Lovely thing to know. Uh, again, uh, I think Buck and I will both so much. Both love going here, and um, since you know both Buck and I have good taste, we wouldn't keep coming back if we didn't like it. So bear that, bear that in mind. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to uh, basically kick everybody out of the uh, out of the meeting. If you got any questions, again, you can shoot me an email, Danny at murexdive.com. Next month. I believe the speaker, our, our Zoom, our Zoom seeker speaker, is uh, Marty Snyderman. We'll talk about some uh, photo stuff, and I don't remember the exact date, but it is always the second Tuesday of the month. So, uh, hmm. Angelique and Danny, thank you very much, and thank we'll, you. we'll talk to everybody down the road. Thank you, thank you Eddie.